and Deputy Speaker, and it's a pleasure to follow uh, the Honourable Member for Hartford and Stortford. And I would like to congratulate the Right Honourable Member for Bristol North West in introducing this excellent <laughs> private member's bill here today, where I have learned so much about forensics uh, that I didn't know, and the contributions from my Right Honourable friend from Bolton West has also informed that greatly for me. Uh, so during lockdown, many of us had to make a lot of changes uh, for entertainment, and I think whilst one of my most enjoyable activities was a weekly Zoom quiz, uh, it also gave many the opportunity to catch up on a little bit of TV. And as a bit of an 80s throwback, I, I've been glued to the new Cobra Kai series on Netflix, but I also managed to stumble across an old favourite of mine, which is Quincy M.E. And for those who've never watched Quincy before, uh, it follows the exploits of a forensic pathologist who works for the police uh, in Los Angeles and helps them solve all manner of different crimes. And it was a groundbreaking series, and when it was first launched in the late 1970s, uh, nowadays, of course, we see many different crime dramas based around similar concepts that we've been uh, discussing here in this chamber today. And one of the things that always made me smile was that Quincy seemed to spend more time in restaurants and bars chatting to people, whilst he would usually send his excellent assistant oh, Sam yeah, off to the laboratory to do most of the actual work. Uh, what it did do was stoke a real interest for me in the nature of forensics and the huge contribution it can make towards police work uh, in what has effectively become a, a new age of, of fighting crime. Uh, forensic science has made it possible to investigate crimes we once thought unsolvable and has given those seeking justice over historical cases hope. Uh, science and technology are elements that will drive this country's economy forwards and it's something I'm, I'm delighted that we're investing in. And earlier we heard from our honourable friend for Grantham and Stamford, uh, which of course the constituency that boasts a very famous female chemist uh, whom I'm very fond of. Uh, and we hope that today this will help raise the profile of forensics and of course we would like to see uh, myself as a former school teacher I'd like to see more girls taking STEM subjects uh, I think that's something that we we really need to be encouraging yeah, yeah. Uh, but it does raise questions of course over the regulation and accreditation of uh, such activities and forensics is now so widely used that this bill is to be very much welcomed uh, we want to ensure that the police, prosecution and, of course, as has been mentioned, defence in criminal proceedings are adequately, sustainably and proportionately served by the high quality scientific analysis of relevant evidence. And this is a point that was excellently uh, made by my right honourable friend, the Minister, earlier. Uh, the Forensic Science Regulator, as it stands, has no powers of enforcement, and this is why we need to make sure we put it on a statutory footing. And whilst most of these services are completed in-house, we also see an increasing number of SMEs providing them. And giving the FSR statutory powers will help to achieve consistency and assist in the process of accreditation. And I think it's also sensible that we are looking at assistance that can be given to smaller providers to help them meet the financial costs of this accreditation. Uh, I will give way. I, I thank my friend for uh, giving way. Um, with uh, recent events in terms of some of the providers having failed, uh, does he uh, agree with me that having that provision, more comprehensive provision, more providers will actually enable a more resilient service so that if there are any problems in the future that spur capacity that excess capacity that could develop within the system would ensure that if there were a problem to arise that other providers could actually cope with it i thank my honorable friend for his contribution and i think he's absolutely spot on in his analysis and i think this is one of the joys of the the free market and allowing uh, businesses to, to thrive can really contribute and, and give us that wide base of providers that are there. And I, I fully endorse what he is saying and I think that very much forms part of, the, um, part of the structure that we're looking and that this bill will hopefully be able to strengthen. And I think uh, carrying on with that point, uh, standardisation will help us move towards a more efficient system and I'm delighted that the National Police Chiefs Council uh, also support this legislation. 
So going back to Quincy, uh, I can't remember a single case being thrown out because the laboratory wasn't uh, up to the correct standards or because they weren't sure of Quincy's credentials or the competence of those undertaking the work. As I said, Sam in Quincy sounds very good while Quincy was having his coffee or whatever it was. Uh, but we now live in a very different time to the 1970s and 80s, uh, where digital forensics now also play a highly important role in police work. And I'd, I'd even look at myself as an aspiring computer programmer once upon a time um, on my Amstrad, typing in BASIC, which is now completely obsolete, of course, uh, and I'm having to relearn things myself. So non-accredited labs are far more open to challenges. And we can be proud that we have high standards here in the UK, but I think a move towards a statutory regulated service would help to build on this and reduce the potential uh, for any challenges to be made in court. And we don't want to be losing cases on technology, uh, technicalities, and I think this, this bill today will help to prevent this. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, I very much welcome this bill. I'd once again like to thank the Honourable Member for Bristol North West for introducing this today and everyone else for their contributions.